Hey my beautiful bitches, it's me Fiona St. James and welcome to another episode of Fiona's Coffee Talks. And as always, I'd like to start off every day with a fresh hot black cup of coffee. Hold the cream, I'd love to. Guys, it's June, happy gay pride month, yay. And hello summer, finally, the heat is here. Thank God, cause I'm sick of the damn cold. Anywho, today's Topic is, drumroll please, part of my documentary series, Before Stonewall. <gasps> so, Before Stonewall uh, premiered in 1985. It was done by Greta Schiller and Robert Rosenberg, narrated by Rita Mae Brown. So, it basically covers all of the decades leading up to the Stonewall events, and it uh, investigates the national cultural perception of homosexuality and particularly the conflict between like the police and censorship. So it's, you can see it on, <clears throat> excuse me, on Amazon Prime. It's about an hour and 45 minutes. It covers a lot. So I'm just going to hit on a few key points that, that I thought like made a difference. So, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> must be someone, I mean, something I ate. <laughs> so 1920s to the 30s, so the Roaring Twenties. So 1920 to 1933, you have prohibition. So essentially, like, alcohol was legal. Now, at that point, like, gay people were around, but it was, they were hidden. You had to be, because if not, you would be put, like, in an insane asylum or arrested or electroshock therapy or what have you. And it was also, what I found fascinating was that a lot of people thought that they were the only ones that felt that way. So now, because you had these speakeasy bars, which were basically like, you know, underground illegal bars where they sold alcohol, but everyone went to them. And that was a place for people to like let their hair down. So suddenly, gay people finally felt like, okay, we could like be ourselves. And despite the fact that a lot of them would get busted, they were so profitable that they went on forever. And so then, but then when Prohibition ended in 1933, that was sort of like the end of it. So then fast forward, you know, you have World War II from the late 30s to 45. So now you have all of these men and women enlisting and women uh, finally were part of like the workforce and they were having economic growth. So now you have all of these women that, that were, you know, put together in whatever department or entity they worked in and then they realize, oh, I'm not the only one like this. So by and large, the, you see that a lot of the women that were there in the military were lesbians. Uh, and, and a lot of the guys, even if they weren't necessarily gay, what would happen is they would like be like, oh, let's go out for the night on the town and like try to pick women up. But half the time they wouldn't. So then they'd end up fucking each other. Ain't nothing wrong with that. So and then the women also, you know, they even if they were married, <clears throat> they realize, oh, you know, I always kind of had these feelings, so suddenly they were not alone. Now, what's fucked up is that there was an individual, like one of the higher-ups, who was like some straight white man, who decided that he was going to be against lesbians. So, what, whatever group it was, which I forget, that they were like, I think they said like 972 that were part of like whatever entity that were there in the military, and the the head of that group, he had a conversation with her and said, I know that, you know, I've heard that there are lesbians there, so I want to fire all, I, I want to get rid of all of them. And then this woman was like, well, <clears throat> if you're going to fire anyone, you got to fire me first because I'm a lesbian and most of us are. And then the man knew to like leave them alone. I, I should also say that at the beginning of the documentary, you see when they were doing it, they like put a, uh, an ad out in the village voice so they wanted people to like come forward and tell their story. So what's so great about the documentary is that you have these uh, people that were experiencing this and like they have footage and pictures and they are there talking. So it's quite fascinating. Okay, so then the war ends and now, you know, women who finally were like working and had economic growth basically took a step backwards because now the war is over. They go back to their homes and now, of course, you know, the woman's place is in the home, in the kitchen, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, fuck you. You know what? Women's place is where she wants it to be. So uh, all of that happened. Then now come the 50s. So 1950, uh, the, the Mattachine Society, which was the first like national gay organization for predominantly men, well, political as well. And then in 1955, the Daughters of Belitis, which was uh, 
the first organization for lesbians and they each have their publications and so now finally like gay and lesbians are starting to get together and you know try to like get some kind of rights or if, if nothing more apart from all of that and then being political it was also a source of socialization and knowing that you were not alone now here's the whole hoo-ha with that you know the government y'all bitches need to say the fuck out of our lives because it's always these ignorant heterosexual white men that don't know shit that sit here and always have to like try to fuck shit up so Eisenhower, 1953, does this executive order number 10450, which basically was uh, taking apart Truman's order, which was 9835, was that executive order number, which is in 1947, which basically gave people rights. So in 1953, Eisenhower's executive order pretty much dismantled all of that got the FBI involved, and essentially, if you work for the, any form of the government, they were allowed to, like, investigate you. So <clears throat> they would, like, follow you, and, like, if they thought you were gay or lesbian, they would have people seeing, like, following you in your everyday life to try to bust you, but unbeknownst to you. So then with this order, one of the things that was added was that you can get your job terminated because of your sexual orientation. That's fucked up. So, because you would be accused of being uh, gay or lesbian, and then if you would say, well, who told you? What's your proof? Who's your source? Oh, well, I'm not allowed to reveal my source. And then your ass would lose your job. How fucked up is that? So, you know, it, it's, it's still like we have always had to fight for our rights. And you think of it, that's just the whole thing is kind of messed up. So that was 1953. Now we're going to fast forward, you know, uh, late 50s, early 60s, the whole civil rights movement and black power. That really was like the start of everything because that whole movement, it was, you know, they, they set the bar and the prototype of how one should deal with the government, you know, peaceful demonstrations. And so then all of a sudden from that, then you had like the, the women's liberation movement, the gay movement, and basically any group of people that are oppressed, which is any group of people that ain't a straight white man, you're oppressed, unfortunately. So then these groups suddenly were like, okay, well, they're doing it. We should also. And like what the gay movement did at that point was they realized or they were thinking, you know what, let's like dress conservatively. So then you have the the men in suits, the women in like dresses and even like wearing nylon pantyhose so that they could like try to fit in with what America thought was like, you know, normal. So then they wanted to be conservative so that they could be taken more seriously. But you know, at this point in the 60s, like, you know, there were gay bars out there, but they were getting raided all the time. And you know, God forbid, if you were like in drag and your ID showed that you were a man, then you would get like, you know, busted for that, or if you're a woman wearing slacks, then, oh, you're wearing men's clothing and that's not your gender, you know, and, and that even brings into play the whole, like, butch femme thing, which, let's keep it real, like, gay or lesbian, some can pass for heterosexual, some cannot, you know, some gay guys are little queenie, <laughs> other ones are, you know, butch, same thing with the women, so, you know, back then in the 50s and 60s, it's like, with the women in particular, it shows in this documentary that, like, if, if a lesbian were, like, on the butch side, so that they wouldn't get harassed, they would sometimes even, like, amp their game to, like, try to play it past as if though they were men, just so that they wouldn't be harassed. Because back then, if you were out in public and bitches fucked with you because they realized, oh, that's two women, no one had your back. They'll fucking try to beat you up and people might be looking and thinking, ah, that's not right that they're doing that, but they're not going to intervene. Anywho, so then here it is, you have the, the 60s and now you have uh, people protesting and picketing and dressing nicely, but, and then now you have 1967 and you have the whole hippie movement. So that was all about free love and that started in San Francisco and that was a lot of like you know, the younger generation, and then they pretty much, like, changed the whole perception of, like, 
you have to dress a certain way to be taken seriously because they weren't conservative in their dressing. And then, of course, you know, there was so much political turmoil at that point because the Vietnam War and like bitches being drafted. And it's like, bitch, war is stupid anyway. And I'm, I'm a fight for you when you're treating me like shit anyway. Hell is that all about? So this documentary like pretty much covers all of that. And there's so much more I can say, but I'm like, girl, you know, I could sit here and talk for two hours sometimes, sometimes, <laughs> but watch it. It's on Amazon Prime. There's also FX did a documentary series a few weeks ago called Pride. It was a six part event, six hours and starting from the 1950s, each hour covered a decade. That was really quite fascinating too. And some of what I'm talking about is also covered in that as well. So, you know, moral of the story is, you know, everything leading up to Stonewall, people like finally were fed up and decided to fight for their rights. And even though we've taken strides, you know, the bottom line is everything that we have now as gay people <clears throat> or as any people, you know, can easily be taken away because these sneaky sons of bitches, it's like I, I, I've never understood the whole, oh, well, everyone is equal except if you are gay or except if you're black or except black. No, except nothing, honey. Well, all human beings treat me with respect. I will treat you with respect. That's the way it should be. And then life would be so much easier. But... I don't know, maybe it's these, some straight people, maybe their dicks are small and they feel like they need to exercise power and like be mean to people. Girl, get over yourself. So, but even these days, you never know, these sneaky bitches, something that we have now, they might try to take away. So don't think that just because we have certain rights now that the fight is over. There will always be a battle to, to maintain what we have. And... It's sad to think that way, but it's the unfortunate reality. So, anyway, guys, hope everyone's having a great start of the summer and a happy Gay Pride Month. And check it out. It's called Before Stonewall. Also, check out Pride, which was on FX. Another, another documentary that I watched was called A Secret Love. And that deals with this lesbian couple that have been together for like 60 years. And it tells their story. And that one's really quite good as well. So... Anywho, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Hope you like what I had to say. Don't forget, give me a thumbs up. And uh, after this, you should be seeing this Friday, June 11th, I guess is the date. So my next one will be two weeks after that, which would be my gay pride video. And then the following week, I'm going to do a 4th of July video as well. So anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. I love you all. You guys, uh, being here with you is what I look forward to foremost than anything else. So... Love you.